Hello and welcome. Um, this is a little bit of a different intro because this video was all filmed as one, so it was two hours long and I thought that might be a little bit too long. So I've split it into two videos, so this will be part two of Summer at Marisol Bay from the video that I recorded, which will actually be part four, I think. <laughs> um, so we've had an aquarium date and now we're going to visit Liam we are in the Wyatt route and this should be the very end of it so uh, I hope you enjoy and let's get back to it Cairo Ooh. he's just taken off his tie and suspenders <laughs> uh, he's got he's got blue eyes and they're so pretty. Look at how blue his eyes are. Hello, Cairo. He steps aside and ushers me into his tiny home. Tiny, tidy home. There aren't very many pictures hanging up around the place. In fact, there's not much of anything but a television set, an end table, a few chairs and a couch. Liam is a minimalist, it seems. A lovely place you got there. Thank you. I'm aware the style doesn't appeal to everyone. It suits you very well. Should I be offended by that? <laughs> he motions to the couch and I take a seat. Why? Because I think a clean and tidy environment suits your personality better than a cluttered home like mine? Nice answer. The food is still in the oven for about 15 more minutes, but the table is all set. He takes a seat next to me and runs a hand through his hair like he's exhausted and leans back into the couch. Did you cook a four-course meal or something? Five courses, actually. Oh? <laughs> Five courses? I hold onto my stomach and look down. I don't know if I can eat all that. What about Captain Bailey's figure? Can't have a dinner date without... <laughs> Without an antipasto and a dessert. I, I won't change my mind on that. My heart leaps into my throat at the word date. I don't know if he's cleverly hid that into his speech to test the waters or if he doesn't realise he said it, but I'm not sure how to respond. I ignore the romantic undertones of the word date and push the conversation on. Uh. <laughs> oh, you meant to break his heart. Don't do it. When did you learn to cook? My parents divorced, but oh my god, another divorce! This game's a homewrecker. <clears throat> my parents divorced when I was a young child and I moved in with my father. He was always busy with work and didn't have time to make family dinner, so we always ordered out. I miss my mother's homemade cooking, but the two of us didn't leave on good terms. Oh, so this is the opposite. Wait, they're not going to be brothers or something, are they? Another wild, another wild suggestion, but like... My, my theories have been changing so much about this game. Are they... No, because they're, they're on friendly terms, unless they don't know. Oh, this game's... It's, I didn't expect this game to twist my mind around so much. So instead, I turned to the internet and cooking shows to teach me how to make my own meals. I feel like it's a red herring, but like, I also feel like there's too much of a coincidence. My heart constricts as Liam tells me his story. It's hard to imagine eating dinner alone every night. Even when I'm home from work late, my sister or one of my parents will stay up and talk to me while I eat. Do you live by yourself? Yes, but don't give me those eyes of pity. I've always been alone. Even when I lived with my father, it taught me how to be independent, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Being independent is not a bad thing, but doesn't that get lonely? I talk to Mrs. V every morning. Oh. Plus there's Kamala. Sad boy. And Wyatt sometimes. <laughs> 
The way he says Wyatt's name is as if he's grating... As if it's grating on his tongue. What's that deal? Point is, I have people to talk to. It's not a bad lifestyle. I have more time to do what I want. God damn it, I now think that both of them are sons of the... Of the owner of Marisol Bay. I think they're brothers. God damn it. Ugh! Oh, I, I really want to know what's going on. More free time to learn how to cook fancy gourmet meals. The tensions that's been building up begin to dissipate. Despite the awkward questions I might have been asking, Liam was very open with me, which I really appreciate. There's time to binge crime shows, read books, and learn new hobbies. For example, right now I'm learning how to do lanyards and I'm teaching Mrs. V to do all the stitches during our shift. Lanyard? You mean those plastic cords people use to make keychains and stuff? Liam nods. The two of us are silent as we enjoy each other's company. The oven's time begins to go off. Has it really been 15 minutes already? Liam stands up and dusts off his pants. Head into the dining room. It's the door on your left. I'll bring the food to you, so make yourself comfortable. I follow Liam and... turn when he heads into the kitchen. Oh, this place is nice. The dining room has the same moderate yet classy feel that the living room does. The, the table is full of delicious smelling food and even more is placed on the counter beside it. <laughs> Extra! I take a seat with my back to the door so I can look out of the screen door leading into Liam's backyard. You must be making a lot of money at the resort to be able to afford a place like this. I live with my parents and my sister, but even then I feel like our home is barely big enough to fit all four of us sometimes. First off, we have some olive and cheese. Ew, olives. Liam walks into the room with a platter in his hands. He places it gingerly on top of the table. I really don't think I can eat so much food, but because Liam put in such a great amount of effort, I'm going to at least try. He sits down across from me after getting two glass china plates from the, from the kitchen. You really didn't have to go through all this trouble for me. Nonsense. I only want the best for my friends. I can't help but smile at that. Yes, this is what I wanted. For us to be able to be friends and hang out like this. Perhaps that's formally next time, but this is a great start. You're on a date? Eating the both of them. <laughs> the two of us eat through at least three courses, chatting about anything that comes to mind. It becomes clear that as we get deeper into our conversations, Liam begins to pull farther and farther away. Something is bothering him. Spill it. You were so happy to have me here before, and now three courses in, you're all sad and junk. What's up? I'm not sad, I'm... <sighs> His voice trails off for a moment, he lets out a pain sigh. I'm just a little... stressed out. I feel guilty that I'm having fun with you tonight instead of working on my event at the resort. I know my life shouldn't be centred around Narasol Bay, but my future depends on this event succeeding. That's understandable. You really care about Marisol Bay. He nods. I do. I only really fear the outcome of having both events on the same day. I assume you'll be helping Brooke. It is, after all, your side of the resort that would be succeeding in the end. Can't both the recreational and the luxury sites prosper? There are two events that cater to two different demographics. I see both being successful. I think it's a little idealistic to have such an outlook. A divided operation is going to stay divided. Cairo, I love Marisol Bay, and I want to see it become the upscale resort it's been transforming into already. People call me an elitist and snobby, but I don't think it's wrong of me to have finer tastes. 
I just can't see Marisol as a family resort any longer. The business will make more money and will be more exclusive, which can lead to a spike in popularity. There are so many benefits to this. You don't have to sell me on your ideas. I like that you are passionate about it. I want to see your future succeed, but I also want Wyatt and Brooke's dreams to come true as well. So I can't make my decision right now without thinking about it some more. I, you, I owe you a well thought out answer. Liam, we're friends. That's what you said, right? He nods from across the table. I'm going to support you, even if I can't be there in person. I wasn't playing a prank on you when I asked if we could be friends outside of work. That means you can confide your dreams in me and I will take them seriously. If this is something you really believe in, I can't do anything but root for you. Thank you. Cairo, thank you. His words are brief, but I know that he genuinely appreciates my sentiment. Maybe one day he'll tell me how he, why he feels so strongly about this resort, but until he's ready, I'll be there by his side as friends. The two of us talk for a little while longer. I can be myself with Liam, and I think he feels the same way. I want to get to know him even more and see where our journey will take us. For now, I'm going to spend my time cheering, his on, cheering him on until the event is over and we both have a second to breathe. When we finish the food, I'm practically waddling to the door. Better food than Mo Della Pearl, huh? Yeah. For sure. Invite me back again sometime, Five Star Chef. You're welcome anytime. Eating alone is not enjoyable as eating with someone else. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me today. I like talking to you, so anytime. I'm all ears. Oh, blush. I will take you up on that offer. It's getting late and we both have an early, early shift tomorrow, so we say our goodbyes and I leave feeling content with how things have gone. I have a lot to think about now. Whose dreams am I crushing? And whose am I trying to help succeed? This is something I'm definitely going to have to sleep on, but... I should make my decision tomorrow so that the preparations can begin. Wow. <laughs> Whose dreams am I crushing? <laughs> I hardly sleep a wink last night. When I left Liam's house, I was so stuffed from his delicious cooking. I assumed I'd sleep like a baby as soon as my head hit the pillow, but that wasn't the case at all. Instead, I tossed and turned all night, thinking about which event I'm going to offer my help to. I want to support everyone, but I can only physically be in one place at a time. Both Wyatt and Brooke want to see the resort remain a place for families to make memories. Liam wants to see the resort grow and evolve into the luxurious place he imagines. I thought long and hard about where my interests lie, and I know that I have to go with my gut. I told both Wyatt and Brooke to meet me in the lobby before my shift so I can say my decision to them, to, to both them and Liam, without having to repeat myself. I'm nervous, but I have to do it. Walking into the resort with my usual coffee in hand, I'm greeted by a group of people. Liam, Mrs. V, Wyatt and Brooke are all conversing in a circle like a group of friends who haven't seen each other in a while. When they hear me walk in, all eyes fall to me. Cairo, good morning. Captain. Hey, Captain. Cairo. Hello, good. Hello, dear. Good to see you. Liam nods at me in acknowledgement. Ending the greeting ritual of the group. <laughs> Man nod. You're looking a little pale, Cairo. Are you okay? White is grinning. His eyebrows. Uh, his eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at his face, not the words. <laughs> his elbows propped against the concierge desk, right next to Liam, who is quietly typing on his computer. The eyebrows propped against the concierge desk, that's so disturbing. <laughs> oh, is a little Cairo nervous to tell us his event he's going to be helping with? White is all smiles. <laughs> 
acting as if this decision is a small one. It's important because it speaks to whose dream I want to invest in more, which one of my friends do I want to stand side by side with and help achieve their goals. This is horrible. Don't make, no! I don't want to make decisions like this. At first I thought it would be a simple choice. I'm with Brooke and Wyatt almost every single day. Brooke helped me with my costume on my first day of work before she really got to know me. <laughs> She's been my lunch buddy and a person to talk to on the ride home from work. Wyatt has been equally as important to me, though he's a bit more aggressive than Brooke. The man has never ceased to provide me with smiles and laughs. He stood up for me when a particularly grueling customer tried to disrespect me. With the two of them supporting me like that, it would seem like a no-brainer to return the favour. Though, if I've learned anything in life, it's that it's never that simple. Cairo. Yes, well, Cairo. Hearing Liam's voice calling out to me, I snap out of my thoughts and look up. He has stepped away from the computer, but I s is still standing behind the concierge desk with Mrs. V. Huh? Hmm? I don't know about the others, but... Me and Mrs. V have discussed our event and have decided that if you choose not to join us, we will hold nothing against you. Do what you must. We, yes, we understand wanting to help all of your friends. Do what you think is right for you. People who are meant to be in your life will remain even after that. Right, she's so sweet. She's right, you know. This event shouldn't destroy any friendships along the way. If you don't want to help Wyatt and I, neither of us will be upset. You... He'll, he'll, he'll be a bit upset. <laughs> I might be a little upset, but that's only because that means less time we get to spend together. Wyatt winks at me. So, if you're sure about your answer, don't keep us waiting. Let us know. I take in a deep breath. I want to help Wyatt and Brooke help Liam and Mrs. B. Well, wouldn't that be a plot twist? We're on the Wyatt route and we go and help Liam. I'm gonna help Wyatt and Brooke. Brooke hops up into the air and throws a fist up. She's not even bothering to hide her excitement. I knew Kyrie would make the right choice! Liam shoots her a glare and she lets out a forced cough. <laughs> what I meant to say was, I'm sure your event will be fine without Kyrie. She smiles and tilts her head to the side. Wyatt places an arm over her shoulder, joining in her merriment. I think you were right the first time. Kyra made the best decision of his life. Ugh. So much for not being spoil sports, huh? <laughs> oh, Liam grumbles, slamming the mouse down into the desk. Listen, guys. Enough. We will have no ill will. Both events will be great. Everyone has quietened down once Mrs. V speaks. Brooke is the first to break the silence. Right, well, I need to get ready to open the lookout. I'll go with you and get my spot ready on the beach. See you there, Kairu. I nod my head at him. Aye aye, matey. I spend a little extra time chatting with Liam and Mrs. V, and then head to the Riptide to get changed for today's shift. Already at an hour 15. <laughs> Reading everything makes it so much longer, but damn, this is a pretty long game. The days go by pretty quickly as I work alongside Wyatt and Brooke. Despite Wyatt only being a guest at the hotel, Brooke was very adamant that he'd be involved in planning the event. Actually, Brooke went above and beyond for Wyatt's mother. She's going to be a special guest tonight. I'm happy that Wyatt trusts us enough to throw her a birthday party that she can share with the rest of the resort. Now that it's the day of the trivia night, I'm feeling confident that all the hard work put into it will pay off. Your hat. Brooke comes up to me and begins to straighten out my pirate hat. She dusts off my shoulders and twirls a strand of my hair with her index finger. Perfect! Captain Bailey, you look like a million doubloons. 
Aye, thanks for the kind words, lass. Don't worry. And no one has even arrived yet. You can pick Haru for a little. <laughs> Don't you know that once he's in that suit, Karu can't break character? Wyatt places a hand on my shoulder. There's a mischievous look on his face. Not even for a cupcake? Brooke turns to the table behind her and holds up a blue and green frosted cupcake with rainbow sprinkles. These are the, desert, uh, these are the desserts that the chefs at the lookout made for the guests of the tonight. She waves the cupcake in front of me. I'll give you one if you let Kyra come out and play for a little. Walk the plank. Not on me, ship. <laughs> Walk the plank. I place my hands on my hips and shake my head at the two of them. Wyatt seems to think I'm the funniest person in the room as he can't stop laughing the more I speak. Mama Wyatt is going to think you're an absolute trip. Thank you. Thanks for being a pirate tonight. It's not often that she gets to have a fun night out. He frowns for a moment as he suddenly remembering something and scratches his head. You know, she didn't even want to come today. It took so much convincing to get her here. Marisol Bay doesn't bring up the best memories for her. Huh? No? Why not? Didn't you guys come here when you were little? Yeah, it was our family vacation spot, but the magic kind of dwindled away when her and my father left and... Wait. The magic kind of dwindled away for her when my father left and took my brother with him. But the magic hasn't left for you. You're still here. Every single day. Wyatt winks and nudges Brooke with his elbow. Well? Looks like... <laughs> I haven't e I hadn't even noticed that! It looks like I'm the only one who can get Kairi to break character. I realize what I've done and grown, slapping my hand against my face. It's okay, Kairi. I have this effect on most people. No! I did it for the cupcake! I quickly take the dessert from... From Brooke's... Oh, for, from Brooke's hand. And stuff the moist cake... Oh, there's a word that people hate. <laughs> into my mouth before I say anything else stupid or ridiculous. It's the best cupcake you can get at the resort. And I'm totally not biased or anything. A familiar ding goes off and... Brooke reaches for her work phone in the front of her apron. She turns it on and begins swinging, swiping to the, to the right. Ah, Amelia wants to go over some last minute things with me. You guys can handle setting up the tables before guests arrive? Yeah. Yeah, we're good here. Brooke thanks us and rushes off to handle some things for Amelia. I walk to the back table where the placemats and trivia boards are. I remember Wyatt had mentioned in passing that trivia was something he had often done with his mum when on their nights together. After tossing around some ideas, we decided we could have our own version that would appeal to all kinds of guests. Even if people can't guess the answers right, Captain Bailey will walk around and make sure everyone is having a good time. I'll be giving out prizes, jumping in on the games, and making jokes. I'm kind of nervous. I say this as I place one of the trivia boards at an empty spot on the table closest to us. You've got nothing to worry about. You're the best actor I know. People are going to have a great time. Even if ever at all you feel like you need a helping hand, you can turn to me. Thank you. Thank you, Wyatt. Of course, but don't make a huge deal out of it. We still need to set up these tables for our dear friend Brooke. Oh, look at you blush. Right. The two of us continue our work until Brooke returns. Together, we all finish the final bits of prep work and start letting people enter the lookout. I greet all of the guests as Captain Bailey would and then Wyatt leads them to an empty table where they can order food and begin marking down their team names for trivia. This continues until the special guests arrive. 
one I recognize almost right away. Wyatt's mother has a striking resemblance to him. She has the same light brown hair and almond-shaped eyes as him. But the way she smiles that gives her away. But is she wearing a Hawaiian shirt? Please tell me she's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Ahoy, matey. I bow my head slightly and she lets out a small giggle before extending her hand out for me to shake it. Say you're the infamous Captain Bailey my son is so smitten with. I can feel my face heat up at her words. I can't believe Wyatt told his mother about me. Oh my <laughs> I thought that was her for a second! Oh, he's, he's, got, he's got his Hawaiian shirt buttoned up. He's all buttoned up! And he's ducked in! Look at him! <laughs> he looks so proper! He's wearing his bodies! Wyatt comes up behind us and throws his muscular arm over my shoulders. Mm. Did I use the word smitten, mother? <laughs> when he appeared just then, I'm just like, holy shit, is that the mother? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 that's Wyatt. <laughs> you didn't have to. For one, you're wearing the nice Hawaiian shirt and it's all buttoned up. <laughs> <laughs> she got your number. Oh no, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, mother. Quite as you can see me in my ugly Hawaiian shirts, too. My its mother turns to me. And you've still chosen to stay? Unfortunately. I break character for a moment. My its mother and I begin chuckling at her son's pout. It's actually really adorable. I kind of want to lean over and squeeze his cheeks. Well, thank you for entertaining my son. I know he can be a handful and I'm sure it does get rather lonely for Wyatt being here all by himself. Wyatt clears his throat. <laughs> hey! Let's go find you a seat, Mum. Before they leave, I hold my hand up in front of her. Happy birthday, lass. I can see why it's smiling from the corner of my eyes. His mother thanks me and the two of them go sit at the far right of the restaurant. Despite Wyatt's words earlier, it doesn't seem like his mother's unhappy to be there. I hope that tonight can really impress her so that she will consider coming back to the resort with Wyatt. Even though he has Brooke and I, we can't replace his family memories. You can make new family memories though. As Brooke begins to welcome the guests on the microphone Amelia set up, I walk around and make sure everyone is ready for our awesome trivia night. About halfway through the trivia night, a child begins to cry uncontrollably. This looks like a job for Captain Bailey. I lean down by the child's side and take hold of his hand. Lad. There's no room for tears in our adventure. His mother looks at me apologetically. He misses his father. The event at Mer de Pearl and the Trivoli Nights are being held at the same time, so my husband couldn't be here with us. That's actually a really sad revelation. Brooke, Wyatt, and Liam are so fo focused on protecting their own memories that they fail to realize the damage the resort's division has done for the experience for the guests. Ah, uh, me hearties, don't fret. Ye should win a prize to show him later. But, Arr. don't worry about it. Sometimes we can't be with our mateys, but that doesn't mean we shan't enjoy the time. You tell him about your day, and then he will tell you about his. And, I reach into my back pocket for a fake gold coin. I flip it and it lands on the table in front of the child. This is for you. I'm able to calm the child down a bit, but it doesn't change the fact that his father isn't here with him right now. If both sides of the resort could exist together, we could avoid scenarios like this and have more happy guests roaming about. The rest of the night goes by without a hitch. Everyone, including Wyatt's mum, seems to have enjoyed themselves. Brooke and I clean up the lookout while Wyatt sings his mother a happy birthday song. When everything is finally over, 
Wyatt pulls me to the side as his mother talks to Brooke. Hey, can I steal some of your time for a talk? I push him here behind my ear with it, but nod. I want to hear Wyatt's opinion on how he thinks the trivia night went anyway. I can spare some time for you. Thank you. I'm going to say goodbye to my mother, but meet me at the hub. He seems genuinely thankful, and I can't help but feel my heart swell up with pride at all we accomplished today. It was a great success. I take a seat on the bench and kick my feet up. Despite how well the event went tonight, I have a lot on my mind. I am not qualified to make the decision on what kind of resort Marisol Bay should end up as. I was only here for a short, f- for a few short months. Some of the other staff members have been here for years, some even decades. They've seen far more than I have. When I needed to make a choice between helping Brooke and Wyatt or helping Liam, I realized something. I didn't want to have to choose. Why couldn't I be there for all my friends' events? I often wonder how good a friend's Liam and Brooke would be if they didn't have to be have the distance of the opposing sides on their mind. If Liam could let loose for a few hours and eat dinner at the lookout, and if Brooke and Wyatt tied their hair up and put on some fancy clothes for an evening out at Meridilla Pearl, they'd each see how great both places are. I can't imagine my summer having gone by better than it already has. All, all the steak lunches I ate at Madela Pearl with Liam and Mrs. V, the laughs I shared with Wyatt on the beach at Pirate, Pirate's Cove, and the gossip sessions I had with Brooke at the lookout. If there was only one side, regardless of what it was, I'd be missing out on so many different experiences. Half of my memories would just disappear. Marisol Bay, boy. Marisol Bay is a place for families to have fun with their kids and for couples to share a drink by the ocean. There is no room for division. Footsteps shuffle towards me. They get closer and closer until finally the person has settled down on the bench beside me. I look up to see Wyatt. Hawaiian shirt buttoned to the top. Hair actually combed and styled. Doesn't look any different. He he looked really good today, and that genuine smile of happiness never left his face as he sat with his mother. While he's always smiling and laughing, this is different. A complete and total wave of peace has washed over him. It's good to see to see Wyatt so relaxed. I know I said Liam. <laughs> it's good to see Wyatt so relaxed. Today was fun. Wyatt's eyes meet mine. We gaze at each other. It was a really great idea you guys had. Everyone was so enraptured in answering the trivia questions, the food was delicious and the music was super lively. Wyatt looks at me, putting an arm on the back of the bench behind me. Company was good too. I can't help but laugh. Yeah, your mom is a really nice woman. She's got the same sense of humor as you. Really? I love the banter between these two. There's a really nice, uh, there's a really nice feeling between them. Wow, you're really gonna turn me down like that? He shakes his head, but he's still smiling. My mother really liked talking to you today. She sees why I like you so much. Why do you like me so much? I thought it was obvious by now. You're funny down to earth, dedicated and passionate. Though, I really think I was drawn to you when I saw that look of awe in your face when you saw the cocktail ocean for the first time. You know, when we bumped into each other? It reminded me of that same magic that Marisol Bay had captured my heart with. You told me when we were having lunch that you were thinking of the aquariums you used to visit as a child and how much fun you had with your family. These kinds of experiences are important to me. My younger brother doesn't see that. 
but he only feels negatively when he thinks of our family because of how it all ended. He chooses not to remember the good times we had together as kids. <sighs> Just because our parents divorced in such an explosive manner doesn't mean that we aren't brothers who really liked spending time with each other when we were younger. Wyatt's smile has turned into a frown. Aside from our lunch date together, this is the longest I've heard him talk seriously about himself. You don't speak to your brother anymore? Oh, I do. But it feels like we're strangers. More acquaintances than relatives. We grew up in different houses and were raised differently. I was taught to hold on to what I have while he was taught to let go of anything slowing him down. I'm sure that there's a place the two of us can meet in the middle on that but matter, but he needs to be willing to talk to me first. Baby steps. I can't imagine being on bad terms with a sibling. My sister and I are pretty close. It must be especially tough for Wyatt, as it seems like he's the only one trying to restore their relationship. I'm torn between thinking it might be a lost cause and that Wyatt needs to continue trying. Sorry. I'm sorry. This isn't why I wanted to talk to you. You don't really care about all the depressing stuff. When we ended the day on such a high note? Of course I care. When I decided to help you and Brooke, it wasn't because I was pledging my allegiance to your cause. I want your dreams to come true. Oh, It's because you guys are my friends, and I want to see your dreams accomplished. If I can help achieve your goals, I will. Just like you both helped me, the new guy. You could have just let me be the weird pirate mascot on the beach by myself every day. To be honest, I wanted to see this pirate attraction Amelia was excited about. And because I thought it was going to be really cheesy and lame. You know, a good idea but poorly executed to save money and maximize profit. I rolled my eyes at his words. Wow, and why did you put in the effort to find me? Hey, I learned my lesson. You're pretty good at what you do. More than anything, you bring a passion to your performance that most people working in the heat with kids all day can't fathom. I come by all the time because I like to watch you in your element. I like talking to you. The real truth is, my mother was completely right. I'm lonely. But since I met you, I haven't felt that way. Heck, <laughs> you even called to see what happened when I was gone for a bit. No one really does that for me. Oh. Oh, right on. Maybe because you don't let them. You tease your way in and out of every situation. It's not easy to know the, the, real, the, the real Wyatt. The real Wyatt. When you turn everything into a joke. My words sound harsh, but this has been something I've been meaning to tell him for a while. I didn't know if it, if it would ever be appropriate to bring up, but here we are. Then let me show you the real Wyatt right now. The guy who really, really likes you, Cairo. Ooh, that was fully voiced. He twists his body so he's able to grab my hands. I feel the warmth of his skin as my heartbeat quickens. The light from the globe behind us shine on, shines on Wyatt's face, and I can see the blush tinting his cheeks. I'm sure mine look the same way. I know I tease you a lot, but my summer wouldn't have been the same without your banter, your passion, and your kindness. She sounds like you about Hiro, to propose to him. You're the captain of my heart. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I tilt my head to the side and blink twice. Did you just? Wyatt. Wyatt. That was terrible. Oh, also fully voiced. I never know what lines are going to be fully voiced or not. <laughs> I see his crestfallen face and then shake my head quickly. Not your confession. The pirate pun. Wyatt's eyes perk up and he grins widely. I just figured, seeing as you're still dressed as a pirate and all. Oh shoot, I am. 
forgot all about my uniform. Jeez, why are you something else? You know that? But I guess that's why I like you so much. I know that you genu genuinely care for people and you know how to have a good time. When you're not around, I miss you, like, a lot more than I should. Well? It's easier to miss me. Nah. <laughs> I hit his arm playfully and he shakes his head, so he's... A hair hits the side of his face. This is what you wanted to talk to me about? Yes. I wanted to tell you how great you are and... That... And now that I know you feel the same way... Captain, brace for impact. I'm going to kiss you now. I resist the urge to laugh. Honestly, why aren't making a big deal out of this is, and not just lean in for a kiss without warning? The two of us gaze at each other. Wyatt smiling like he just won the lottery and me probably looking terrified and as red as the ketchup packets at the lookout. Wyatt leans in and I meet him halfway. The two of us share a passionate kiss that makes my insides twist. This is unlike anything I ever imagined, but it feels right. Like this is where I'm supposed to be. When we pull away, aw, give me a kiss, CG. It's not fair. Wyatt lifts my hat slightly and tucks the pink strand of hair behind my ear. I guess this goes without saying, but you can call me whenever you'd like. I chuckle and nod. I will. As much as I want to sit here and enjoy the cool night's breeze with you, we have people waiting for us and you need to change into your regular clothes. So we can just continue this tomorrow then? The two of us stand up and I take Wyatt's hand in mine. The two of us walk back towards the lookout together. Today was a perfect day and I'm glad I'm here for Wyatt so he doesn't need to be alone anymore. Oh, the <laughs> I thought that was going to be the end! Almost two weeks have passed since the events at the resort. From what I've heard, Liam's event went well. Everyone enjoyed a good meal and pledged some money to the resort. No massive destruction has occurred. The owner hasn't decided one side of the resort better and shut the other down immediately. Everything has gone back to normal. I still come to work every morning with a large coffee and spend time speaking with Liam and Mrs V. Wyatt stops by Pirate's Cove every day to tease me and I drive Brooke home as per usual. The only thing that's different is the melancholic feeling that doesn't seem to leave my gut as the day goes by. Summer is almost over, which means my contract as a resort entertainer is ending. Once the weather gets colder, Marisol Bay won't need a pirate on the beach. To my understanding, during the colder months, the beachfront activities are shut down and more indoors. In indoors? And more indoor events are offered. What is wrong with me? Liam, Mrs. V, and Amelia will definitely still have their jobs, but I don't know about the other staff members like Brooke and Camilla. And what about Wyatt? Will he stop coming around too? I didn't expect to get so attached to Marisol Bay. When I applied for this job, I knew it was a seasonal position. My plan was to simply make it through and get my letter of recommendation at the end of the journey. Now, I'm fearful that the friends I've made here won't remember we, me when I leave. Will they continue to be wrapped up in the pool of Marisol Bay? The riptide comes into view. There's going to be another meeting today before we all head to our stations. I grip my coffee cup. I can only imagine it's about the upcoming end of summer activities. Stealing myself, I take a deep breath and enter the ship. When I enter the cafeteria, I'm greeted by some familiar faces. Sitting on, sitting at a table in the front are Mrs. V, Liam and Camilla. Liam and Camilla are chatting about something while Mrs. V nods along, munching on a bagel. At another table behind them are Amelia and Brooke. Brooke has leaned over the table, showing Amelia her phone. In the very back is Wyatt. 
standing by himself against one of the metal fridges. What is he doing there? I, re I reach up and rub my eyes to make sure what I'm seeing is really there. Why is Wyatt here? He isn't a member of the staff. I walked over to Wyatt, my heart beating in my chest. The two of us have been talking a lot on the phone together after my shifts and he accompanies me to the hub. We're not officially dating or anything, but Wyatt has made it very clear that once the summer is over, he intends to ask me on a real date outside of the resort. My heart does cartwheels just thinking about it. Wyatt looks up from his phone and our eyes lock. He excitedly waves me over. Well? Look who's here. Honestly, I should be saying that to you. What are you doing here? This is a staff meeting. Exactly. What? <laughs> what? Exactly what? <laughs> he simply shakes his head, but he's still smiling at me. That's not important. It is important! What are you doing here? Don't... Don't change the subject, Wyatt. Tell us. What are you doing here? Was I right on along and you work here? Did you get a job? What's going on? Don't you want to talk about something else? Like the plans I have for us on Friday night? No, I don't. I want to talk about why you're at the staff meeting. Let me take you out. <laughs> Your last day of work. I promised you a real date. I didn't think he meant literally after my job ended, but it sounds like fun. If White is planning it, I'm sure it's going to be a nice time. What are the plans then? Romantic pizza dinner at my house. We can watch the movie or show that inspired you to be an actor. Send me the name of it. Wyatt and I have been spending our time together getting to know each other a little bit more. It's a lot easier to do when I'm not dressed as Captain Bailey. Wyatt likes to think of fun and creative ways we can learn about each other's interests. For example, I just found out the other night that he loves sushi when he brought me a homemade bento box for lunch the other day. I was about to enter him, a big burly man enters the room holding a clipboard similar to that Amelia always carries around. I mean, never to see his mother. He's wearing a pinstripe black suit, red tie, and his grey hair is slicked back with a few ounces, a few ounces of gel. Oh no. That's the owner of the resort. Oh no. Brooke was right the whole time. The event was a competition. Both our event and Liam's event went pretty well. Nothing really bad happened. So there's nothing to be worried about. Yeah, but... My mind begins to run rampant with all the possibilities. Hey, don't worry so much. Everything is going to work out fine. How can you be so sure? I can't be sure, but thinking the worst makes me really unhappy. I tend to look at the positives. All I know is that whatever life throws at us next, we can handle it together. There. Mushy. He's right. No matter what happens, we won't have to go through it alone. We have each other and our friends. The owner begins to speak, drawing all of our attention. Thank you for coming in, everyone. The event of summer evaluations are available. So if you can all quiet down, I can share the results. The room grows deathly silent. Everyone is looking at each other. Even Amelia seems a bit confused. Wyatt and Liam, if you will please stand beside me as I make these announcements. Huh? <laughs> they are. They are. I try my best to whisper, but Liam thinks the whole th uh, Wyatt thinks the whole thing is comical. He winks at me before lightly grazing my arm and heading to stand by the owner in front of the room. Liam is already standing there, tapping his foot impatiently. Hello, everyone. For those of you who are new to the staff and who don't know who I am, my name is Ken Phillips and I'm the owner of Marisol Bay Resort. The two men st standing beside me are people most of you know fondly. My sons, Wyatt and Liam. 
fucking knew it. Okay, so I was kind of right about him working there and then also very wrong about him working there. <laughs> <laughs> but the stories were way too similar to not be brothers. Ugh, okay, I guessed right. I nearly choked on my own spit when Mr. Phillips said, Phillips? Phillips said that Wyatt and Liam are his sons? I can see the mischievous look in Wyatt's eyes, though Liam seems as stone-faced as ever. I try to make eye contact with Brooke or Amelia, but they're both pretty absorbed by the boss's words. When I look to Mrs. V, she only smiles at me. She knew this all along. Of course she did. They grew up there. <laughs> of course she did. They have been around as long as she has. A melancholic feeling sizzled in my stomach as I see the two men I have grown to care for standing in front of me. So this was why they had wanted their events to go so perfectly. Marisol Bay is their father's resort. Everything starts to fall into place as I make sense of the situation. Wyatt and Liam's relationships struck me as interesting when I first saw them together. Wyatt amped up the joking while Liam seemed to get more and more annoyed. Mrs. V had to try to be the, had tried to be the mediator. Both men had talked to me about their relationships with their family. Wyatt held on to the happy memories with him and his brother, while Liam told me he wanted to move past it. They each spoke of a divorce and have clearly handled it very differently. Wyatt went with his mother, and Liam stayed here with his father. It makes complete sense now, while... Why Liam was so insistent on making this the best summer event of the summer and why Wyatt wanted his mother to be here for Brooke's event. This resort is important to both of them, but in two very different ways. Hello everyone. Good to see you, beautiful people. Liam doesn't say anything. He just rolls his eyes in response. He doesn't want to be standing up there next to his older brother. This summer... I was finally able to convince both of my sons to help with the resort, and I tasked them with running opposing sides. Wyatt was in charge of the recreational side, while Liam spearheaded the luxurious side. They both thought it would be better if the rest of the staff had no idea. This way, the results they achieved would be organic and true to the guests of Marisol Bay. Two weeks ago, they both held an event in which I got to see firsthand how each side operates. And now I know about the rumours that I want to shut down one side of Marisol Bay, and that simply isn't true. This place has grown to be what it is because of the guests and staff who put so much love into it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Rather, I was simply trying to see if I could get my sons on the same page. I don't know if I accomplished that. No. Nah. <laughs> But I hope that by working at Marisol Bay, they both discovered why I opened this place and why it means so much to our family. And so, our evaluations to today are for the resort as a whole and for my son's efforts. I'd like to hear anything you all have to say. Thank you. Can we, can we tell them they just need to work together, get over their shit? Bring the sides together. I want to thank everyone for being such great people. I've gotten to know you all throughout the years, but this time as I was leading the charge, I learned so much about you guys, about myself and about my family. I have to thank Cairo wholeheartedly for that, and I hope he forgives me for not telling him who I really was. I noticed why it winked at me and everyone turned to see my reddening cheeks. No, I suppose I can't stay mad at him. Everyone goes around the room talking about what we learned, though. I was able to sneak away before it got to my turn. Everything about this summer has been so surreal. I don't quite think that I'm ready for it to end just yet. As I stand in the centre of the hub, I can't help but close my eyes and remember my first day. I complained so much because I would be a mascot, 
though I learned quickly just how important my position was. It spent my, I spent my summer making people smile and giving them memories that will last them for years to come. I met so many wonderful, interesting, unique and caring people. So now that it's all coming to an end, I'm happy to have experienced it all, even if I won't be coming back to Marisol Bay next week. The memories I've made and the people I've grown close to are so much more powerful than a simple goodbye. I feel a light tap on my shoulder and I spin around to see the man who has captured almost all my thoughts this summer, Wyatt Phillips. Captain. <laughs> Captain. Mr. Phillips. Oh, don't call me that. It's so uptight. <laughs> I'm still the same Wyatt. My dad is just the one signing up paychecks. So you were in charge of the recreational side of the resort the whole time. You weren't a guest. My father has been asking me to about working in the family business for years and I usually turn him down, but this year I decided I wanted to get to know the man that my little brother be became without me and my mum in his life. When I found out that Liam was interested in turning the place into an exclusive upsell experience, I knew, he ha I, knew I had to show him and my father what this place means to our family and to the families who visit Marisol Bay. I don't want to run the resort as far as my leadership go, the, as as far as my leadership goes, is telling Amelia to let you and Brooke run your area as you see fit, and the two of you didn't disappoint. Sorry. Sorry if that seems deceitful in any way. All this time, Le Liam was in charge of me and Brooke. He chose to handle it by letting us do what we thought was right. It makes me feel really happy that he trusted us so much, especially me, considering I was as I was a new hire he barely knew anything about. I don't see a problem with any of that. It's not my place to stand in the way of you and your family, or the resort you grew up visiting. My father definitely sees the need to keep the recreational side of the resort running, but the issues with Liam still stand. I didn't get any closer with him. We're at arm's length and I don't have any clue what to do about it. You have to show Liam the man that you are, and remind him that how uh, much you miss him. It's not going to be easy to get to where you, you used to be, but you can't give up. I'll be here for you every step of the way. Hmm. <laughs> how can you still feel that way even though I lied to you? I wrap my arms around Wyatt and place my head against his chest. I can hear his heart beating calmly as he strokes my back. You were acting to save your family. You did a good job, Wyatt. Mm hmm? <laughs> I guess you need to make some room for me on that stage of yours, huh? But in all serious, I do have some news you might want to hear. I pull away from him for a moment and look up at his smile that never fails to make me feel better. I talk to my father and we both agreed that Pirate's Cove was a huge success this year. Mr. Philip, Mr. Phillips, wants you, no, wants you to come back and be an entertainer year round. I have full faith you can accomplish great things at Marisol Bay if you want to stay. I don't hesitate. I lean up and capture white slips with mine. Spending even more time with this magnificent man at this beautiful resort doing what I love, it's a no-brainer. When we pull away, Wyatt begins to chuckle. I'll take that as a yes then. I need to make some more memories here with you. Though summer is over, I won't be stepping away from Marisol Bay after all. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That was very long. <laughs> this episode, or this installment, has ended up being close to two hours, but I just couldn't stop. I just had to know what was going on. <laughs> um, so I hope you liked that. We will pick up 
next week with Liam's route. I'm excited to see what his part of the of the um, like what what his side of the story is a little bit more. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Again, this game is so long and it was made in two months. Two months, that's incredible. Um, so thank you for joining me. And I hope you'll tune back in for Liam's route. As usual, we'll have more covers and other stuff. If you have any games you'd like me to play, any suggestions at all for any kind of game, visual novel, but any any genre, drop me a, drop me a comment. We'll play some stuff. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Bye.